Hi, this is Magda from Utopia Health Career Center. And in this video, I'm just going to talk about how to manage lab tubes when we do, when we do blood, draw, blood draws at the dialysis clinic. So today, during our training, I was teaching my students on how to manage the lab tubes for collecting the blood um, of our patients and specifically because hemodialysis technicians are the ones that are going to draw the blood at the dialysis center. It's important to know that there is an order for blood draws and then there are specific things that we're going to do after we draw the blood um, to keep the to, to protect the tubes so that our results are accurate when they come back okay and because remember the treatment that we offer to the patient depends on what we see in um, these results the lab draw results so your patient can receive a treatment that they probably didn't need or they may not receive the treatment that they need if you do not manage the tubes well, okay? So basically, this is a, like an example of the amount of tubes that a patient, uh, that you could draw from your patient. Usually, we draw tubes from our patients in a monthly basis. Let me move this a little bit. In a monthly basis, every patient has some type of lab, lab draw um lab draw in a monthly basis okay so i just took these exam the the this sample of tubes and i'm just going to go through them if i had all these tubes to draw i need to understand that there are going to be some tubes that don't have a gel separator and then there are other tubes that have a gel separator like so okay you see the ones that have the gel separator are the ones that are going into the centrifuge the ones that do not have the gel separator are not going into the centrifuge so in this case that really doesn't uh that doesn't mean anything for our order what it has inside is what's going to determine the order in which we're going to draw it. So let's take as an example, let's take this uh, navy blue. It's empty. It doesn't have any type of additive inside. Okay. Usually we test aluminum and zinc out of this one. And dialysis patients, they can, like, for example, if it's a patient that uses aluminum pots and pans, they can have a buildup of aluminum. So we want to make sure that we are testing them at least on an annual basis. So this is the one that we would use. And this would be the first one. This would be in the order of collection. We would take this one first. The reason for this order is because there are other tubes that are going to have additives. There are some of them that have something that is called citrate that helps um, the that helps control the clotting, the clotting to, uh, very fast of the blood. There are others that have a little bit of anticoagulant. And if we draw those first, we can mess up the result on this one. We don't need any type of anticoagulant, any type of citrate inside of this one. So that's why we want to make sure that is the first one. Another one that does not have any, any type of additive would be this plain red, okay? And in, depending on the dialysis clinic, they could be different, the, the color, but this one is plain. It doesn't have any additive. And with this one, if it's some, um, say, peritoneal dialysis pain, uh, patients, which is another type of dialysis, then we would draw... Um, uh, peritoneal dialysis solutions in here and we can test it. We could use it for that. Then, and that would be the order, then this light blue is very important that we take it in this order. This one has a little bit of sodium citrate in there and it's going to control the tube so that the blood doesn't clot too fast or it doesn't clot too slow because we use this one actually to test and measure 
how fast the blood this patient's blood is clotting or how slow it's clotting so that the patient can can receive the um therapy whatever th anticoagulant therapy is needed okay so that's the one this is the one that we use for that now by the way which i i didn't mention all of these tubes when you draw them you're going to invert the tubes do not shake invert the tubes seven to ten times inverting gently seven to ten times especially this one if you shake this one or you invert it very very being very harsh you can break the red blood cells and then we'll get an inaccurate uh, result because we're going to have hemolysis which is the breakage of the red blood cells then these are the most common tubes that you might see then this one this one is the the next one in the order and this one uh, if you if you see it has the gel separator this one is going to test chemist for chemistries for example all the electrolytes sodium potassium um magnesium uh also phosphorus we test from here so uh buns which is the waste of our patients are going to be tested here so here with this tube we're testing plasma the plasma or the serum the electrolytes that are in there okay after that and we also invert that after that one then we want to do the lavender one and this one has anticoagulant okay so that's why we want to draw this one first because we don't need anticoagulant on in this one and then we draw this lavender lavender we're going to test cells like the red blood cells white blood cells, um, hemoglobin, hematocrit, uh, also hepatitis B, we can test from here. Um, diabetic patients, hemoglobin A1C, we can test using this one. And then at the end, though, that's it for uh, pre-dialysis, pre-treatment tubes. This one, the uh, green tiger tap top would be at the end. This is a post-treatment tube. And in this one, we want to, whatever we get in here, which is going to be just a small amount, what we're testing is how good that dialysis worked. So we're testing BUNs, and in this case would be post-BUNs. BUNs is the waste of, you know, we measure the waste of the patient at the beginning and at the end of dialysis. So that's the way, the order. So it's important to know that there's an order. Another important thing to know is that you are going to invert gently seven to 10 times. When you are done with these, when you collect these that don't have the, um, the gel separator, these go directly into the refrigerator immediately. Now these are going into, let me put these aside these are going these because they have the gel separator these are going into the centrifuge okay so this one which would be the red tiger top you need to let this one stand for 30 minutes before it goes into the centrifuge this one you don't you do not need it to to stand for for 30 minutes you can put it inside of the centrifuge immediately okay this one we want to create a clot we want the red blood cells to start clumping together and that the um serum starts separating and then when we place it inside of the centrifuge then because of the force of that speed at the end, you will see red blood cells in the bottom, you will see the gel in between, and then you will see the serum in the top. So what would I do with these? Let me just show you real quick. We are, we would place them. Once we draw them, we will place them in here in our centrifuge. Okay, so we would open our centrifuge like so. And in this case, because I have one, two, I'm going to use something that is called the balance tube, okay? And I'm going to place this balance tube directly across the other tube inside of my centrifuge. So if this is my centrifuge, I would do this, one here, 
and then the other one would go directly across. So you should be able to see it there, okay? Directly across. I can have the green tube also in here, so I'm gonna place this one here, and then the other one is directly across. So here you go. That's the way that they balance each other. And each, every time I spin, I am going to spin for 15, minutes for 15 minutes okay another last thing another last thing that i wanted to show you this is the last thing i wanted to show is the lure adapter um, i mean the back retainer is this one the tube holder and then the lure adapter this lure adapter goes you open it and it goes into your back retainer like so and then this tip is the tip that goes onto the end of the patient's um, line, this tip, okay? And I want to show you something real fast. You gotta be careful, don't be fooled by the rubber that's inside of, that's covering this, because we have a needle in here, here we go. See, there's a needle there. So you gotta be very careful when you're dealing with this, okay. So basically, that's it. I wanted to talk about the order. I wanted to talk about the management. Once your the tubes that are inside of the centrifuge are spun and done, those go into the refrigerator until here in the United States, usually a, an outside labs comes by and picks up the uh, tubes. So again, our hemodialysis training class in English starts in April 2nd, uh, 2018. And for those of you interested, you just have to call us, email us, or send us a message through here, through Facebook, and we will get back to you as soon as possible. So that's it, guys. Take care. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.